Hey, what's up everybody? Jess here with Southern Reels Fish and out in my shop this afternoon. And in this video, I'm gonna do a walkthrough of my kayak setup that I have on my 2019, I think it is, Hobie out back here. It's the first year of the redesign. Show you the way I've set it on after many years of fishing and basically just walk you through what I got. So let's do this. All right, so I got the camera in my hand here. I'm just gonna kind of walk around with you guys and show you what I got. I think I'll start with the sonar system since that's the big deal on this kayak. This is the Garmin 74 SV Plus seven inch head unit. It's the cheapest one that I could get at the time that would actually run the uh, Panoptics Live Scope, which is what I have here on this uh, DIY rotating mount that I set up. Got it set up on a ram ball here, just a short adjusting thing so I can move it all around. Of course, it's on its own mounting system. I do like this unit because you can pop this clip back here and the, and the actual unit itself just pops right off and you can store it when you're transporting the kayak. So that's very nice. All right, here we have the actual live scope transducer mount that I made. Uh, this is the DIY version out, out of PVC that I put together a couple years ago. It's still the original build. You can tell because I'm using the hollowed out H-Rail. It's kind of redneck, but it's what I had to work with at the time. Um, of course, I have this attached with another ram ball coupler, the longer one here. And of course, this rotates all around however I need it to. It's on the uh, U-bracket setup that I come up, so I can switch very easily from perspective to forward or down modes just by doing that. And then, of course, you can still rotate the transducer between the modes, and then you can just flip it right back down to perspective mode. It's very nice because you can actually adjust the angle of the perspective mode so you can shoot straight out in like super shallow water or you can tilt it to any degree that you want you know to basically get that sonar looking where you want it to all right back here in the back powering the system i have in this hatch back here three naqua 10 amp hour lithium battery packs that are all wired together basically to make a 30 amp hour pack now these are still wired individual so when i take this bucket out it has the individual connectors here. Um, I used to have a fourth one as well, but one of my batteries failed on me. The first NACWA that I bought way back in 2016, I think it was, finally failed on me. But I still have separate connectors. That way I can charge each one of these with its own charger individually. Or I can take it out and use it for other purposes, you know, so it's nice to have it set up like that. And uh, just if you're curious of what a NACWA looks like when it's taken apart, that's pretty much all it is. It's a bunch of 18650 cells pretty much just wired together with a, a PCM or power control module on it. Basically what happened is the little nickel strips actually failed from corrosion here is the reason the cells are actually still good. So I'm going to end up repurposing these uh, in another project. So that pretty much covers the sonar system. There really isn't much else to that. I do have the transducer underneath, which is just the basic, you know, transducer that came with the head unit. All right, so now, all right, as you can see, I do run the boondocks. I've got the hard wheels, the zero flotation wheels on it right now. Uh, I do have the large balloon sand tires as well, which I highly recommend. This is the first generation of their system. Basically, you can tell because the mounts are much larger than what they have now. The only issue I've had is these clips here. You know, they corrode over time because they're just kind of cheap. Now, a lot of people complain about the boondocks, say they're having issues with them, issues with them cracking the hole. Honestly, I've never had any problems. I've had it on three kayaks. I think the biggest trick is, is when you're mounting these and you're mounting the blocks up inside of the kayak is to just barely snug them up. You definitely don't want to tighten it and just use some thread locker. That way it doesn't back off. Like I said, multiple years, three kayaks, fully loaded, never a crack, any issues at all. So I do recommend them. Okay, I do have some rod holders here. These are the Yak Attack, I believe, the long rod holders that they make. Slip right in, very nice, because you saw how easy that was to remove. Basically just fit, Flip the switch back and it locks them down like so. They are not going anywhere. Or you can just press the switch in and adjust them real quick and they lock right back down. Very nice. Uh, honestly, I only use these for like trout season when I'm trolling. The rest of the year, I really don't have them on the kayak because they sometimes get in the way. But this is the rod holders that I settled on. I do really like them. Also have a Railblazer Camera Boom 600 on here. I've had this since my early days. I've always got it tethered and I got my GoPro or one of my GoPros sitting up here. And that way I have it behind me and I can just whip it out and talk to it or do whatever, you know, while I'm fishing. So that's a really nice setup. I do have the Hobie crate here. Yes, I'm kind of a Hobie fanboy, uh, but it just, their stuff works. It's got the tie downs for the rods built right into it. 
I added some extra rod holders, which was really easy to do because of all the holes that they got in here. So I can carry eight fishing rods out with me if I needed to. I do always take a siphon pump with me. This is a must in a kayak. Never go out without one of these if you can help it. They're available super cheap. It's actually saved my kayak twice now from sinking. Measuring board, I like this ACK, you know, plastic one. It goes up to 30 inches. I've had it so long that the print on the numbers is actually worn off. You can't even hardly read it anymore. I do have a light here. This is just a piece of PVC pipe with a cheap light from Walmart that I basically glued to the end of it. You can kind of see way cheaper than spending a hundred bucks on one of the fancy light poles. For net, I love the Yak Attack Leverage landing net right here. I've had this thing for a long time. Uh, I've actually wore the little foam grip off of it. I think they've changed it now. I think the netting is a little bit thicker a little bit better rubberized, but man, this thing is tough as nails. It has pulled some big fish out of the water. Still rocking the standard paddle here. It takes a beating. There's no point in having a fancy paddle. This one works just fine. I do like the full length though. Of course, I have my fish grips. No particular allegiance to any brand. These are just the most recent ones that I bought. I'm trying them. Uh, pliers, same thing. I always have these tethered. Uh, I've been through many pairs of pliers. Like I said, no particular allegiance. I do like these little Rapala scissors though for when I'm tying stuff up. They're super cheap. They last a pretty good long time. Up in the front of the kayak, I usually have, you know, an insulated bag. This is a Igloo soft bag here. I'll have one of the ice packs inside of it, which is great. Keeping me some cold refreshments and stuff while I'm out on the water. Also in the front of the kayak, I usually have a first aid kit. I don't have it in here right now. I mean, I also will have a dry bag for keeping extra clothes and stuff and things I don't want to get wet because occasionally you do get water inside of here. Of course, I do have the hatch in here. It's where you keep random stuff. I keep leader material and stuff like that. Pretty much anything I need stays in there with me. Oh yeah, also I have a Zuka tube, what do they call this? A Ram tube here mounted on just a Ram ball. I really like this because it's right here behind like my right shoulder when I'm sitting in the kayak and it gives me somewhere to set the pole that kind of keeps it like angled like up and centered so I can use it to tie stuff off with. When I'm sitting in the seat, it puts the bait basically right here in front of me when I'm sitting in the seat. Or if I'm dealing with a fish, it's nice just to be able to set that there. It keeps the line centered and kind of out of the way. Works better than anything else I've tried, especially better than using the rod holders you know, in the crate or the ones in the kayak. So it's, it's just works really good. That's one of the first things I did on my first kayak and I love it. I've actually had that for many years and I just keep it moving it from kayak to kayak. I do have the, the water hose duct tape protection system on the kayak. This is the same basically that I put on it back when I bought it brand new. As you can tell, it definitely has some wear you know, in some places. It's done its job very well. It's protected the kayak from banging into pylons and stuff. I do recommend this setup. It's really cheap. It's really easy to install, very easy to replace. I do run it all the way around the hull. I don't shoot for perfection. It's basically just something that works. And that's actually another benefit of the Boondock skiers. They also stick out as well. So it kind of gives you some added hull protection as well, because this will rub into pylons and stuff and help keep some of that from banging into the kayak. All right, so I got a few other items here I wanna show you. Basically, I've got this fish bag here that I've had for many, many years. Fortunately, they don't make this anymore, which really sucks because this is probably the best fish bag I ever used, honestly. It's awesome because it fits perfectly behind my seat right down in this area right here. And it's perfect for keeping, you know, pretty much a limit of flounder or trout or whatever you're fishing for if you wanna keep them on ice. Now, if I'm, Keeping them in another manner, what I have is basically this fish stringer right here, this large metal hoop. These things are awesome. Um, it can hold quite a few fish, a limit of flounder, a limit of trout or sheep's head. It keeps them alive, keeps them easy to pull in because it's heavy duty. And I do have it connected with a Hobie leash, as you can see right here. But I do have a quick disconnect on it right here. Now this will fail very quickly if something grabs a hold of this, like a shark or something, and pulls on it hard enough, it's gonna pop this clip right here before it puts me in the water and flips the kayak over. So it is kind of a backup if that does happen, because I've had a lot of comments about using this and that happening. So it's a way of solving that, I hope. I don't know, I haven't actually tested that yet. Still have the original version two 180 drive here. 
have had zero issues with this at all. As far as like an anchor, I have like just a little anchor kit here. I take it with me sometimes. Honestly, I've never used it, so, but I do have one. Um, I also have a cast net here. This is just a nice little cast net, nothing special. Uh, it's like a six foot diameter, three foot radius. Perfect size for a kayak, easy to cast. Small enough, I can get it back in the box, keep it inside the hull or back in the back of the kayak. I do have two different life jackets that I use. I have this one here, which is one that just goes around the waist, like so. I use it in very calm water or water or situations that I'm comfortable in. When I've been in a big water or big current and stuff like that, I have this higher end unit that goes over your head. Definitely better flotation. I do prefer inflatables over regular life jackets. That's just me, they're just more comfortable. But that's the two that I use. And another thing that's always important is a VHF floating radio. If you're out on the water, especially any big water like the bay or offshore or anything, definitely have one of these with you. Always check the battery before you leave to make sure it's charged. It doesn't hurt to test it before you leave out. That's safety first, guys. I'm telling you, it's 100 bucks. This one floats. It's easy to see. Worthwhile investment because it can actually save your life out on the water. I love these KVD soft plastic bags. This is what I keep all my soft plastics and stuff in. They're awesome. And as far as tackle trays, I just like these uh, waterproof trays that you can get. No particular brand alliance. I just have these. I had issues in the past with water getting in the back of the kayaks and getting in my tackle trays and causing havoc. If I need a headlamp, I like these little Bushnell headlamps here. Uh, I got this right at Walmart. They're really nice because they're rechargeable via a little usb plug here on the side they last a really long time i don't do much night fishing but when i do go out or if i need more light these are nice i have two of these i never have any issues with light i do have it on a trailer as you can see it's just a modded out jet ski trailer nothing fancy i use the hobby cradles underneath of it yes they're crazy expensive for a piece of plastic yes pvc runners instead do work from what i've seen uh, even though hobie says they don't a lot of friends use them and they work just fine so the only other thing that i can think of that is particular about my kayak is the seat now i gotta show you this all right i do have the standard outback seat here but this one i have modded and i've made it my own extensions here that basically raise the seat almost four full inches as you can tell, looking under it, there is quite a bit of space underneath that seat. I did that for comfort reasons because this Outback killed my back in comparison to the 2017 model that I had. The seat in here, they changed it. To me, it's just not as comfortable. So it's still adjustable up and down. I never once had the seat below the, up the highest position from the factory. So basically that is now the lowest position and I can bring it up even higher, which is where it is now. So it's basically almost four full inches higher than what it could be out of the factory. And I got really lucky because the landing gear that I have back here, there's this bar that goes across now that I added that actually catches the seat stands here and supports it. So I can have the seat in a fully flat raised position like that, or I can drop it down all the way and recline big time like that, you know, and drop the front back down to match it, or I can come out like that. So there's a multitude of seat adjustment options. I don't say that's one of the best things I've done to this kayak because this kayak has always killed my back compared to my older Outback that I had. And I always wondered what was going on with that. And I figured out, I think it was the seat height in relation to the pedal height. I remember the older Outback had that drop down section where it dropped down to the pedals. And this doesn't, this is pretty flat. And I think the pedal height is actually higher into relation where your butt is basically. So your legs are up higher and it killed my back because once I changed the seat like this, it added several hours of durability to my time out on the water. I've already had it out three different times. Cause like I said, I just did this this spring and huge improvement, huge improvement and no stability issues at all, at least for me, you know, with the chain. So. That's something I definitely appreciate on the water is more endurance. And I'll be doing another video about how I set that up here soon. I'm sure there's others out there, but it's definitely a nice change. All right, folks, there you go. That's pretty much a walkthrough of how I take my kayak out on the water. I've been using this setup for about two years now, pretty much since I've had this Outback. If you have any questions, just hit me up in the comments. I'll be glad to answer them as best as I can. Um, if you need links to some of these items, just let me know. I'll try to post them in the 
description as uh, people ask for them really. I'm not gonna take time to look all of that up ahead of time. That's it, my setup, how I fish with it. It works awesome. Haven't really made any changes recently, so I'm pretty settled on this. Uh, anyway, that's it, peace out. See you in the next video.